Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's time now for another how-to video. I've got a couple of requests in and I'll try and get to those videos, but today we're going to do something that's near and dear to my heart and that is VLANs. Remember that VLANs are a part of many, many topologies and it doesn't matter whether you're wired or wireless, you're going to see VLANs. So we'll do that today. Maybe in a later date we'll do some VLANs and trunks for you. It's a, kind of an extension of the VLAN discussion. So in a second, I'll show you the topology, and then we'll get right into the configuration. So without further ado, VLANs. So here is our topology. We'll start off with one laptop and two laptops, and they're both going to the same switch. You can see they're connected via the Cat5 patch cables. And right now, we can't do very much at all with these, this particular topology. They are trying to ping each other, but they can't. So we're going to fix that for them. But at the same time, we're going to divide this switch right into by using VLANs. Okay, guys, here we go. Uh, we are talking about VLANs, and I suppose I probably ought to let you know that there are some resources available to you. Remember that uh, all of my stuff is coming out of the, the books that I've written for O'Reilly or for my classes. And so in this particular case, we're talking about VLANs. And VLANs are actually chapter four in the packet guide to routing and switching, which is available from O'Reilly. But if you go out to my site, brucehartpence.com, then you can see links to all of the videos that happen to have anything to do with routing and switching. And so and I'm adding content out there all the time. So all the links to all the books are out here and all the videos. So the basic stuff that we've been talking about in previous videos can be found in the core network uh, protocols and, and things like that. So there's, there's your resource for you. And of course, I'll occasionally point you to things out here. All right, so we've been doing um, VLANs this time. And to start off with, we know that I've got a USB to serial adapter and so I've started by looking at my COM port for, via uh, device manager and then I'm going to go ahead and, and open up PuTTY. Now because I look there I know that I'm on COM4 so we'll change this to COM4 and light it off and we can see that I've got my switch connected here. Now in preparation for this video, I did write, erase, and reload the switch, got rid of the VLANs like I outlined in the previous video. So what we have now is everybody all playing in the same pool. So we've got all of our ports in the same VLAN. Now our basic problem in this particular topology is that I want to have two different VLANs and then we'll talk about what we have to do with the PCs here in a second. So what I'm going to do first, I'll show you two di different ways to set up VLANs. One is by going to the individual interface and then saying switch port, oops, switch port access, <laughs> spelling counts, and then pick your VLAN. So I'll use VLAN 2 and 3 today. So VLAN 2, so it didn't exist we saw from our list there so it's creating it so what that does if I go back and now take a look at my VLANs I can see now that I've got VLAN 2 created and that I've got a port put in that particular VLAN well that's pretty tedious so what if we did this instead so I'm going to do an interface and I'll show you the whole thing interface range command and then I can get away with putting a whole bunch of them in there at the same time. You can see that my prompt is changed to interface range. And now I'm going to do the same exact thing. Switch port access VLAN 2. And what that does is put everybody over there in VLAN 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put everybody in, put the other ports in VLAN 3. And I'll use the same command. VLAN 3. 
Oops. So it'll show VLAN for you. And now I've got two sets of VLANs. Now, for those of you who may remember a little bit about this or have done some reading, you probably know that if this is a layer two switch, I need some help to get my two different networks uh, to talk to each other. Remember that when you create VLANs, you're actually creating subnets, and so it's a routing function. So you can make an easy argument that VLANs live at layer two because they're on a switch, but they're a layer three boundary because you need to route between them. But because this happens to be a switch that is what we call a multi-layer switch, I'm going to do one other thing to sort of facilitate that communication. And I'm going to tell this switch that I want you to do IP routing. Now what that does is not only creates the ability to forward between the VLANs, but it also makes it so that this switch now has a routing table. So the switch now is acting like a router and a switch. And we'll get out of this for a sec. And maybe what I'll do is show you the running config, the impact of that. So you can see that my, my IP routing command is right there. And then if I blow by all this security stuff, we can see that I've got this kind of configuration per port. Now, it's, I guess since we can see it here, it's worth mentioning that switch mode dynamic desirable. That means that ports have a particular mode when you're using them. The two modes that are most common are going to be your access ports and then your trunk ports. We are accessing VLAN, one, uh, VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, and that means we're going to use them as access ports. But because we have this dynamic set here, then what that means is that if I was to plug something else into the switch port, it might be able to automatically configure itself to be either an access or a trunk port. And that's a security concern. Maybe we'll talk about that at another time. But that's, that's what that means. Your ports can actually switch the mode of operation that they're, that they're using. All right, well, I think that'll polish it up for our config. The rest of it is just going and configuring IP addresses on the hosts and then getting them to talk to each other. Again, we'll take one last look at our VLAN table here and we can see that we've got these guys. Hey, you know what? As long as we've got this here, I'll show you one other thing. <clears throat> if you have been spending any time with switches, you know that switches use something called a source address table or constant addressable memory cam tables or um, their their MAC address tables there's a lot of synonym, synonyms for them uh, to actually forward traffic back and forth but what many of you may not have realized is that whoops is that VLANs are a part of our MAC address table so we've got our VLAN column here and our MAC addresses and the type that they are. Now these are all the MAC addresses that the switch knows by default. And these guys here are the ones that we just created, or ones that we just added to the source address table because we created the VLANs. If we were to look at this later on, we would see that our hosts were also going to be in VLAN 2 or VLAN 3. To now before we go over to the configuration there is one other thing that I almost forgot since we're going to turn this guy into a switch that routes we probably ought to tell it how to do that so I'm going to go to my interfaces here and in this case I'm going to talk to interface of VLAN 2 and give it an IP address and what this does is it makes the VLAN itself the gateway for the hosts in that particular VLAN, which means you don't need a router. Whoops. So let's go to VLAN 3 now. And we'll do that. And that's because I'm going to set up two different networks here, and that is the 192.168.2.0 network and the 192.168.3.0 network. Now the reason I decided to do that is because 
it's a pretty good practice when you have your VLANs to base your subnetting scheme on your VLANs. So I'm using VLANs 2 and 3, so I'm going to use networks 2 and 3. Now there's one other thing that I want to show you since we have changed this guy into a switch that routes. He now has a routing table. Now this routing table appears because I also have those PCs or those laptops connected to the VLANs. So here's my routing table. So this allows me to communicate. And so now if I take my switch turned router and try to ping my hosts, if I did this right, I should be able to get them. Now that first one failed because it was updating the ARP tables, but now they're all through. And I'll do the same thing with the host on the other side. And we just see the same exact result. All right. So that's just a, a slight delay in updating the tables, but you can see that we now have the ability to get to all of my hosts, well, all two of them, <laughs> in, the, in my small network here. So just as a review, we wipe the switch. Hey, maybe we'll do this way. Wipe the switch. Uh, we configure the VLANs. Turn on routing. Now, we only did that because we were only going to use the switch to do this. If I had router, then I'd have to configure the router to do that. And then and we do that. All right. And the rest of that is all in the configuration of the topology. And again, I'll show you that right now. Our first PC, and I hope the fan noise in the background isn't too much for you. And I'll try and get right in on this guy here. So if I whoops we go ahead and ping ourselves and so we know that my network connection is up and running so now I'm going to try and go all the way across the router to the other laptop we know that the the router slash switch is operating as 2.254 and 3.254 and here is the ping to the other side a success. So again, what we have here is laptops, a little old, but that doesn't really matter. Going across, they're into VLAN 2, and then we route between VLAN 2 and VLAN 3, and this guy goes up to my other node. And this guy here, if you can see, is 3.1. And that's it for the topology. And that's it for the configuration. Well, that's it, guys, for VLANs anyway. I hope you enjoyed this little how-to video. My hope is that your packets always get to their destinations. Remember, this is networking. You can do this.